Hey everyone, welcome back to Unfiltered with me, Matt Farnsworth. So happy to have you here. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Really appreciate it. Unfiltered with Matt Farnsworth. So here are some hard truths about getting sober, and I'm going to break it down for you. I know we talk about this often, but this is important. Well, the first thing you're going to have to do if you really want to get sober and stay sober, and these are hard truths. The first truth is, is you're going to have to face yourself. This is not an easy concept for most people. It certainly wasn't for me. You know, there's no getting away from this fact. And, and the old saying that no matter where you go, there you are, couldn't be more true. Now, we tend to distract ourselves, don't we? We do. We tend to distract ourselves with what? We tend to distract ourselves with chemicals, vices, relationships, and excuses. We, we look to avoid that person in the mirror when we are addicts. And we deeply uh, do not enjoy looking inside and saying, wait, wait, who am I and what do I believe and what do I want with my life? That is something that we just, we, we tend to distract ourselves to stay away from that. And here's a huge piece of advice. Those chemicals, those video games, the scrolling on social media, whatever you do to avoid looking inside and understanding yourself is going to hinder your success in recovery big time. I know because I did it for years. So why? Why do we do this? Why do we behave this way? Well, I can tell you the first initial gut emotion is fear. We are afraid. We have that gnawing emptiness, the unresolved wounds, the things that make us truly afraid to be known, to know ourselves. You see, I lived under a microscope for years. Maybe some of you can relate to this. I would go around and I would ask everybody for their advice. My mom and my dad, who were living in a secular world, who were very unhappy at the time. And I would ask my teachers, who really didn't know what they were doing. I mean, had their own problems in their life. My friends, who had no life experience, what I should be doing. Instead of being able to turn to myself and affirming that I knew what I wanted and, and learning from myself, instead, I, I, I took everybody's advice. And it made me crazy. It gave me anxiety. It also gave me bad advice. And so what did I do? I continued to party. I continued to drink. And a lot of the reasons why I did that is these people that I was asking the advice of were giving me poor advice. They were projecting a lot of their problems that they have onto me. So what you need to do is you need to really take a long look and you need to unpack that person in the mirror with some rigorous honesty. It is essential to recovery. No more lies, no more hiding, no more self-deception. That is where you need to go. Now, the pain that you are avoiding is the pain that you must walk through. You do not have a choice, my friend. Facing it may be excruciating, but it will lose its power over you when you face it. And you cannot do this alone. I'm just going to give you another piece of advice. You cannot do this alone. Now, I just said you need to talk to people. But you need to be talking to the right people. When I first went into recovery, I did go to AA. I did have a group that I was in. I did have a recovery that I went to. And that did help me tremendously because I had people there telling me the truth. They wanted me to recover. And that is what you need as well. You don't need people who know you that are going to sugarcoat things for you. You need people who are going to tell you the truth that you can really bounce ideas off of and how you're feeling and learn more about yourself and who you are. If you want to get a sponsor, that's fine. I highly suggest that. Now, I had a sponsor. He was very helpful. He also was very unhelpful in ways. I don't think AA works long term. I think eventually you got to look at yourself in the mirror and you got to say, how do I become emotionally sober? And how do I continue to work on myself, continue to work on recovery, right? For me, it was creating a course, a program, an emotional sobriety system that people can log into and join and take the course I worked with tons of professionals over the last couple of years to understand emotional sobriety better, addiction, and help people. So helping others is a key to having success in recovery and joining a group. Nothing wrong with that in the beginning. Like I said, first 90 days, I did 90 meetings. It helped to teach me about what addiction was and that there were other people a lot like me out there that had the same feelings and emotions when I thought I was the only one. So you're not the only one. Now, sobriety has to become a top priority. Like I said, 90 meetings in 90 days, that was me. Uh, overcoming addiction requires a complete overhaul of your life. It's not going to be a minor tweak. It's going to be a big 
fundamental reordering of your priorities. Those people, places, and things that you often hang out with are going to have to change. I'm sorry. This is how it works. You are going to have to change those things, even if you don't want to. And that's why somebody to talk to is so beneficial. When you have someone to talk to, when you have a person that you can bounce these ideas off of and talk to them about your career that may be hindering your recovery, your relationship that may be hindering your recovery, and they're going to give you an honest answer, you've got to be able to take that rigorous honesty they're giving you and apply it to your life in order to stay sober. Because a lot of things can give us hiccups along the way, and you do not want those hiccups. You have to understand that anything can be redeemed or reformed, right? But sobriety has to be first no matter what. Now, there is no finish line. There's no finish line in sobriety. A lot of people make the mistake of, I got sober, now I'm done. No, you're going to ebb and flow. There's no finish line. There's no... it, it. It's a marathon and it's a life marathon. Just because you got sober and you don't drink doesn't mean that somehow life now just became super easy for you and everything's going to be smooth sailing. Keep in mind, there's a lot of people in the world, not just you. And those people, half of them don't drink at all and they've got all kinds of problems. Life is not guaranteed. We know that. Every day is not guaranteed. Every hour is not guaranteed. We don't have control over God's plan for us. So we can't expect that just because we quit drinking, life is now going to be magical. That's a pink cloud. That does happen in early recovery where you just think everything is so wonderful. I'm sober and I feel good and I'm, I'm not hungover anymore and I've lost weight and I look better. I'm able to function better. My brain is working better. All of that does happen, but then it it becomes pause, it becomes post-acute withdrawal syndrome, it becomes something else, uh, something bad in life happens and you have to learn to actually deal with that problem that popped up without running to the alcohol, which is what you've always done. So sobriety has to be the top priority and there is no finish line. You have to fill the void. That would be the next thing I would say. You have to fill the void with something. There's this void that you're gonna have from not being able to drink, from not being able to use that chemical. And what is that that we would fill this void with? Well, for me, it's God. I fear God. As a man, I wake up fearing God. It gives me purpose. It, it fills me with love and, and meaning. And, and only he can do that. Now, this is my, my version of how I, I make this work. Do I believe this is the only way? Absolutely. I know it's the only way. But I can't say that to everyone because I want them to become sober and I want them to find that way on their own, and they will as they go. Christ is a center in this, people, and he will answer the deepest cries of your heart in a way that substances never could. He is what you have really been craving all along, and I will not elaborate, but as you go through this sobriety process, you are going to find that you are you are going to find a spiritual awakening. And I pray for you that you do because that is the key to finding emotional sobriety and sustainability in your sobriety is having the gospel and understanding the word and fearing God. These are all things that make us well-rounded people. And when times of trouble come, we know who we are going to turn to, not alcohol. Having said all of that, I'd like to recap with the truths that I've given you today and the hard realities of becoming sober. So what do we talk about today? We talked about the fact that we're going to have to face ourselves. We're going to have to learn who we are. We're going to have to just face that. This is who we are. We need to learn about ourselves. We probably set that aside doing what? Distracting ourselves with chemicals, relationships, probably toxic relationships. And we need to understand that we need to remove those issues in order to really look inside and understand who we are and the pain that has been in our lives that has caused us this gnawing emptiness of these unresolved wounds. And we need to start to heal those wounds. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that through rigorous honesty. Remember, we talked about rigorous honesty, very important 
concept here, okay? You're going to have to get honest with yourself if you want to really learn about you and you want to get sober, get sober and stay sober. Remember, you cannot do it alone. That was the next thing we talked about was you cannot do it alone, right? It is good to have people to talk to, but they have to be the right people. These are not the people that you went to the bar with and got drunk with. That is not who is going to help you get and stay sober. So sobriety has to become a top priority. That means you have to put it first, right? God, sobriety. That's how this works. You may have to reorganize your priorities. There may have to be people that you're going to have to cut off that you don't want to cut off, but they could lead you back into a really, really bad place when you're doing really, really well. And now remember, there is no finish line. We talked about that too. There is no finish line in this. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You're always going to have this addiction until you are six feet under and they are throwing dirt in your face. That is how this works. And that is a hard truth. And I'm so sorry to tell you that, but this never gets, uh, it never goes away. It gets easier. It gets easier to maintain with emotional sobriety. It does get easier. You feel very good. There are days that I have rough days, but for the most part, nine years in, I feel great. I am happy. I have a routine. I have a lovely life. And I could not ask for more. I'm so grateful for everything that I have. And you will most likely be as well. How? You fill the void. You fill the void with Christ, with God. You fill the void with that spiritual awakening. That is how you do it. I challenge you to get radically honest about the state of your spiritual life. You know, no more going through the motions. It is time to seek God for real. That will make a huge change in your life. For those of you that that don't want to hear that, I'm sorry, but I'm not. Because I know it will help you. If you got some value out of this podcast today, please consider subscribing to the channel. This is my YouTube channel. Now, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I appreciate you being here. And once again, thank you for listening too unfiltered with me, Matt Farnsworth. I hope to have you back very soon. I am going to have my wife back on talking about relationships. This is going to be great. We're going to talk about love, what it means, what love isn't, what love is. And she mentioned something last night at dinner. She said, you know, maybe we should really talk about, you know, expectations and relationships. And uh, I said, yeah, that's probably a good idea. You know, how to set proper expectations and you know, especially in in a sobriety situation, sobriety relationship. So stay tuned for more. And I appreciate you being here. Appreciate you listening to this. Hope you got some value out of it and have a wonderful day.